Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. And anybody that's new, welcome. Before we start this tutorial, I'd like to just mention a few things before we start. Um, first of all, my name is Debbie, and the reason I never really say my name on uh, any of my videos since I started my YouTube channel a couple years ago, the reason being is because I've had people lately contact me saying that, uh, I guess from my personal page where I post my crafts, they were saying that I was stealing my own, stealing the Crafty Shoppers, uh, Crafty Shoppers um, builds when I'm actually the Crafty Shopper. So it's, uh, I appreciate all of you that have reached out. Uh, on another note, uh, there are some crafters out there that have taken screenshots or have said that the builds, which were my designs, have said that they're the original creators when they are not. Uh, a few people have screenshot um, some of my YouTube videos making reels or uh, have posted uh, the finished part of their craft using my reels, which I can tell my hands and you guys know about my nails are always different with my jewelry and watch. I can tell they're my screenshots. Uh, I don't mind if you guys do that, but please give me at least credit for the build. I do really work hard to come up with some original ideas for you guys. And it does, you know, it just uh, takes me time to come up with these ideas to bring different and new content to my channel. And I would just really appreciate if you guys could just give me a shout out or at least say that I was, you were inspired by me or, you know, you got the idea from the Crafty Shopper then claiming that you're the original creator. I would really appreciate that, guys and um, just wanted to touch base with that. Thank you. All right, let's get this tutorial started. We are gonna be using some Dollar Tree Jenga blocks. You can find these in the toy section at your local Dollar Tree. If they do not have none, they are not in the craft area, so they are in the kids' toys. If you don't find them, ask one of uh, DT Associates. I'm sure they'll be able to help you find them. If you are in the US, you can get them shipped to your store for free. Um, I know a lot of crafters that have done that here in Canada. We only can buy in store, we cannot order online. I am gonna be using Wellbond. I can buy it at I buy mine at Rona slash Lowe's. Uh, Nikki has told me a, a fellow crafter, she buys them, buys it at Hobby Lobby. You can also buy the, D, use the DT glue at, um, DT glue, it's the wood glue. I've never seen it in my local store, so I just prefer Wellbond. I wouldn't suggest using hot glue at all for any of my, um, builds, only for the fact is that the blocks won't seal properly and it'll eventually it'll fall apart. The only time I use wood glue on any of my Jenga block builds is when I'm just gluing a couple pieces on. You're going to need um, a carpenter ruler. You can find this in the uh, hardware section at DT. It just helps your blocks become a little straighter when you're gluing them. I do pre-glue my builds um, prior to recording and doing the count of them and uh, figuring out a shape or design. The Jenga block light up pumpkin that we're gonna do today is a bigger build. <clears throat> you can't really do mini because I wanted the cutout face. So I did do, um, if you look, search through my videos, you can find my uh, little builds for the little Jenga blocks, um, pumpkins I did last year. Now there's two stains I go is usually flat or stacked as we go. And I'm just gonna explain that now before we start putting this build together. When I say flat is just the lengthwise, meaning glued flat like this. The blocks are flat that way. When I say stacked, just means they're glued on the flatter part and they're just glued like this. Every once in a while I get comments about the mat that I work on. I just bought at Ikea. It's just a desk mat. I find it works really well. I usually use it for about a year and then I usually keep them for my painting maps, mats. Um, but I find it works really well. The glue does stick to it, but I don't usually put anything under, under it because it does, um, I just, I'm more careful, I guess you can say, <laughs> say with that. When you're gluing the blocks, I find when you're doing a bunch of blocks like that, is say I just glued the side blocks doing the flat here like that and I would just move it up and I would just do another set and keep moving them around my mat as I go. Um, you can glue a bunch at a time and 
I also suggest having a pen and paper. It's just nice to write down the builds as we go. Just because when you're working with a lot of numbers of blocks, it can be a little bit confusing. Crafts I do are usually a bit longer. They're not like a day craft. So sometimes, uh, you know, my builds are a little bit longer and take a couple days to do. So we are going to start with the top of the pumpkin. And this is going to be the only row of the pumpkin that's going to be done flat. So we're going to do, it's 11 flat. We're going to start that. The next row is going to be 22 and that's stacked. So the rest of them are stacked except when we get to the teeth. Um, I think they are stacked. Well, when we get to the teeth, but this is 22, like I said, stacked. <clears throat> I'll explain this white line when I when we actually put it all together. The next row we're going to do is 12 stacked and you're going to center it and you're going to notice why the white lines there by the time I'm done this build. We're going to do 11 stacked and 10 stacked. I'm going to do four stacked and we're going to stick this right here on the side then we're going to do another four stacked right there. Another four stacked. And we're going to repeat that on the other side. Four stacked. Another four stacked. And another four stacked. And as you can see, I'm going on an angle and I'm trying to make a diamond, so to uh, speak, with the eyes. Next one we're going to do is 13. I'm going to put it right there. And another 13. And there's the eyes. Oh, you know, yep, yeah, 13. Next, we're going to do is another row of stacked 13 and another row of stacked of 13. This time, you're going to, we're going to be moving it out a bit, outwards. And we're going to do another row of 13 and another row of 13. And you're going to keep the edges like it's coming out. We're building the nose in the center here. Then we're going to do one right in the middle. And this one is 21 stacked. I think I just, wait, this is how it's supposed to be. There we go. I didn't want the extra row just because I'd be an extra row of Jenga. There we go. So yeah, that was supposed to be the start of the nose. This is going to go out. And this is going to go out just a little bit further. Just like that. <clears throat> now we're going to be moving on to each of the sides. We're going to do three rows of stacked. Two rows here of four. Another two rows of four. I'm going to stick this one. And then we're going to move on the second row of four. We're just going to move them indented. So the widest part of the pumpkin is where this white is. And another two rows of four. And we're going to 
move onto the 27 stacked. Just trying to center. And it's trying to be, you're just trying to create the middle here that these are exactly the same going down. 24 stacked. And 22 stacked, and this is the last row. So now we have the shape of the mouth. We are going to add teeth, and they're gonna be Jenga. So as you can see, you're building it out, kind of like a stepping stone. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't wanna put my head underneath the camera, but I just wanna make sure when you're gluing them, make sure that you have the proper width on both sides and the nose, and I would glue it all at once so that if you need to shift it a little bit with the glue still on. Now for the teeth. We're gonna do stacked and stacked and glue two, two three pieces together, just like this. So you'll have six. We're gonna put that right in the center. And then you're gonna have two, three pieces stacked. They're gonna turn sideways, not upwards, not like this. We're gonna go sideways. And we're gonna put them right there. Another two of three pieces, and we are gonna put them right there. So you kind of have the kind of jiggity look as teeth. just like that. Now, whatever glue I've seen in some crafting groups that I'm in, people using glue, and I've even had crafters say they use Wellbond and it still fell apart. Now, sometimes when you're working with a smaller build, say you're only gluing, say this part, within an hour you should be able to craft with it. When you were doing a big build like this, if you do read the bottle, it does say that it takes about an hour, but it cures in about 24 hours. So I would I would at least leave it for, I know in the past with some of my big builds, I at least leave it for five to six hours before I start touching it, moving, because all you do is need one saw. If, if you start playing around with it, sometimes it will shift in spots and once it's dry, you can't move it. So just be mindful when you are, whatever glue you're gonna use, is just to be let it cure time, just because right this build here, this section right here that is smaller, it is actually gonna be holding up this top. And it's still doable, but you just need the right drying time to make sure that it's fully cured before you start playing around with it. Um, the reason with the white line is when I was counting them, it was just easier for myself and you could do it for yourself as well. Just reminded me what center of how many blocks. So say for example, this was um, 11 flat, it was 11 blocks. So I wanted to keep everything centered. So in this, in, right in the middle is where I did, I counted, make sure that it was even on each side, just to make sure that I had it all the way down when I was putting it together to show you. And this one's off just a little bit. And I had the whites on the side just to show you where it's going to finish going out and it's going to go back in. That's the only reason why I have the white on there, which easy, it will come off easy only because it's just, um, it's like a white uh, chalk. Now the total number of blocks for this is 310. So there is uh, 72 pieces of Jenga in a box. So you're probably gonna need about four boxes, just um, almost four, just under four boxes, I believe. But I'm gonna let this glue together and once this is done, we're gonna move on to the next step. So I've let it dry five hours and it came out pretty good. Um, it's still probably be better to dry overnight. I'm gonna add two more blocks. So I said 310 earlier, so we're gonna add two more. So that'll bring the total count to 312. And I'm just gonna put them flat right in the corners here. 
just adds a little bit more uh, definition to make the mouth more, I guess, jagged, not so squared here. Just more of a little bit of a round look. All right, so I got the two bottom corners here in his mouth done. Uh, the next thing we are going to do so I'm just gonna file the corners a bit. I did just on the back lightly. Now I use a, a Dremel hand drill, but you don't need that. You could just take a nail file, and just take the sharp corners off so it's not pointy. And we're just gonna do that along the edge. We're gonna omit the bottom here, only because we want it to lay flat. So we are just gonna do on the edges here, and on the back as well. We won't be doing inside the eyes, nose, or the mouth. I'm gonna use some spackling if you're new to my channel. Uh, I started the last uh, couple tutorials, I don't know, the last four or five, I think since the Jenga block barn um, I did in the seam. I did try clay, but the clay does shrink after it dries. Uh, so I heard that DT sells spackling, mine doesn't. I just got this container, I think it's like $3.99 or something like that for something at the hardware store and I find it works well. It is pink, but it does, when it dries, it does turn white. It's a good way instead of cutting blocks and for myself, I like to, I guess, manipulate the shape of these blocks. It also helps just for example, when you're your blocks are not fully straight or you have cracks when you're gluing them you can totally skip this step uh this is just my preference because i like to play around when i'm doing <laughs> crafts um it just helps fill in the little holes and it just makes things smoother it does get messy if it looks messy don't worry if you make a mistake you can always buff it and I'll get that to later. If you don't want to do and just paint it as is, that's you, that's more, you're more than welcome to do that. I always go with a little extra step. I know a few people have liked the spackling that I did and was happy that I got rid of the paper mache um, when I started playing around. So I am going to do the front. I am not going to do the back because the back is going to have, we're all, I'll, we'll get to that later, but I'm just going to do the front with the spackling and I'm going to do the sides and I'm going to show you here. So I want to kind of round out the sides and I'm just going to pick a side right here. If you do cupcakes or desserts, it's just like spreading on icing. Might not look pretty when you're doing it, but that's what a buffer is. It's just a buffer you can buy. I'm gonna just show you one more. And I am gonna go along the side. I will let it dry overnight just because the outside might show white, but it does take certain spots are a little thicker than others, so it might take all night to dry. So it's a good part at the end of the night that before you finish crafting, and then you want to paint it's a good uh a good time to do at the end of the day i guess if you want to say that but it's just a lot better for myself it just just to manipulate the shape of it i found this backling very cheap and just super easy to use and if you make a mistake you it's so easy just to buff off so it's not permanent so just like that and then that will give the smoother shape on the side i will not be touching the eyes, uh, nose, or the mouth. So I let it dry overnight. And the next thing you want to do with spackle, if you haven't worked with it before, um, I had one of the buffer, I have a couple different blocks that I use, just sanders, nail file, another nail file. And all you do is just lightly sand it. So it does look messy, but once you sand it all the way down, I suggest doing it outside. I'm going to take mine outside and I usually put a little flat piece of uh, a box outside and it actually just catches all the dust just so you don't put all the dust on your table and then the little corners that if you got any stuff 
in the corners like you can see I just had some there you can just use the nail file and it just comes right off if you have any little um boo-boos you can just add a little thin coat on the corners I just like it because it just gives it um, more of a little bit of a rounder shape than just doing the blocks, but that's totally up to you uh, if you want to do the, the spackle or not. So I'm going to take the, this outside and I'm just going to buff it all out and we'll move on. Now that I filed it and sanded it all the way down, I'm just going to seal it with some uh, matte, matte Mod Podge. Um, Mod Podge from uh, DT. I'm just going to use the matte one and I'm just going to give it a coat just to seal it in and I'm going to do it all the way around. I'm not going to do the back where I don't really, I just have around the edges. I have a little bit of uh, the spackle but I am just going to do along where and the sides wherever I have the spackle on just to seal the spackle before we color it. Now that the Mod Podge, Mod Podge is dry, I always say Mod Podge, uh, we are gonna do Pumpkin Orange from DT. It's probably gonna use a couple coats just to make sure that you cover all the blocks. And I'm going to paint that now. I did about three coats of the orange. You can still see the little bit of the blocks. <clears throat> Excuse me. I wanna distress it just a little bit. Uh, just kind of like a little bit dirty. I'm just going to use a little bit of burnt umber, some brown, dark brown paint with some uh, orange. And then I'm just going to show you here. And I, I don't know, that's. It's going to. Oh, this is not even changing the color. No, nope, just a little bit. Just going to mix it up here. And it's not much of a difference, but just to make it uh, a little bit dirty on the side. I'm not a really good distressor. <clears throat> you can get these little uh, brushes at DT and you can see I did some on the side here. So it just kind of looks dirty. And I'm just gonna do, if you make a mistake, just wipe it. But I'm just gonna do a little bit of that just all the way down, kind of like the pumpkin goes from in out. I guess it'd be like, it looks darker than it will be, but once it, once it dries, it does lighten up. So I'm just going to finish this off camera. All right. So I did some of that shading. It was a little bit too dark for me and I just painted over with some more orange paint. So it just is very, very subtle now. This is the front side that I did with the spackle and I just want to show you the difference. So there's this side and then there's this side. So that's what I really like about the spackle is that it fills the holes, also makes it more even and I just, I like working with spackles, but I didn't really do the back only because uh, I'm. it's gonna be against a wall and I'll explain that later. Um, but I didn't work too much, just the color on it. Now, I showed you guys my other videos and I love LED, the little fairy, um, the fairy lights, love them. I got a 12 pack, I just ordered them on Amazon. In Canada here, it's a different site than the .com for the US, so I'm not gonna give you the link for them, but I just get the 12 pack and it was just over $20. Just make sure you get the warm white. I find that the, just the bright white, I just find it's more of a bluish color and it's very, it's not inviting. I really like the warm white. And also too in this little pack, and majority of my last pack too, and it's not the same company I ordered from. I'm just gonna show you if I can get this open also comes with um, a bunch of extra batteries and when you need to change batteries it comes with a little um, screwdriver and I really I've always I haven't had any problems some people said they've had problems ordering them online I've never had a problems yet knock on wood um, these ones are the ones with 20 lights I think my last video I had to use two on the Jenga block cross the light up one 
only because I didn't have the 20 lights and I wanted to use the 20 lights, so I had two 10 packs um, that were on there. So I finally got these in, I have the 20 packs. Now my idea is a similar idea, minus the cubes like the cross, to do a light up. So the front piece, the front of it, you wouldn't see the lights on it and you wouldn't put them inside, but it will light up like similar to lighting up a pumpkin. I'm just gonna hot glue this. Make sure when you hot glue your battery pack down that you have the spot where the, um, I'm just looking here, I forgot now. I think it opens up. I'm just making sure guys. I think it was the other way around. Just gotta make sure which ones. So yeah, we're gonna make sure the the screws are the screws are facing up. So when you need to unlock it, the other one that I had didn't have that. That's why I was like, just wanted to double check. <clears throat> I was gonna hot glue it down. Now, if you made my Jenga block light up cross, you know what I'm gonna do next. So. I am just going to, I don't know why this is all, I'm going to start and I'm just, put the wire, I'm going to fold it. So I'm just going to glue this down, I'm going to show you what I mean, so I can get it going here. And you just got to wait for it to dry as you go along. I'm just trying to think of the way to start. So I'm gonna take the first LED light, so I'm gonna turn it on. You know what, I'm just gonna go around this way. I'm just gonna stick the battery under here. Now I am gonna try to put the light closest to the edge so like there, for example, and you kind of want to even them out properly so you have a nice even glow all the way around. Ouch, ouch, ouch. I have those covers and I never use them for your fingers. <clears throat> the next one I'm probably going to do right up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hot glue it. I'm also going to put the wire so it stays flat. So I will do... A little hot glue here, hot glue it there, and I will keep going all the way around. I'm gonna go around this way. If I don't have enough, I'm gonna be adding another fairy light, so let's see how this works. Now that I glued it on, I did have um, a little pattern did, that I did, and I just wanted to show you. So I showed you up to here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. So I did just miss a little light here. I try to balance my lights out when I do it. You could add an extra. Uh, if you watch my my um, Jenga block cross, I did change the color of the fairy lights only because it gives it a different glow. And I did test it out in the bathroom and I will show you in a bit um, just because it's super bright where I am right now. Just because it's more of a, it's still warm white. I want it more of a orangey glow. You just take some of the pumpkin orange get a little brush and you just paint right on the fairy light. So it gives it a nice, like an amber color. I think I did this for my um, last year for, actually I did for my Jenga block fireplace that I created. Uh, I did the amber glow on the wood, faux wood logs. And you're just gonna wanna cover so it gives it a nice amber glow on it. All right, everybody, I just decided to bring you into the bathroom just to show you how the warm look of it is and how it turned out. So we are gonna continue on to the top part of the pumpkin now. All right, now we're gonna do the top. DT has come out again this year with these maple leaves. They come in a couple different colors. 
I had a pack left over from last year. So I'm gonna use the green ones and I'm not gonna hot glue them on right now. I'm just gonna show you. I'm gonna hang, we're gonna use six, seven. So you might have to buy two packs if you don't have any on hand. I'm just gonna do that. And then the seventh one, we're gonna face it forward. So you wanna just cover the edges just like that. Now I did angle, not the end ones, the other ones facing forward. DT has come out with these, well, they were out from last year and I still had a bag of them. They're just the wood logs from DT, the flat part, and then an angled part, if you can find one like that, where I'm gonna have the angled part sticking out and I'm just gonna hot glue the bottom and I'm gonna do it right in the center. like that then we're just going to take a couple more of the maple leaves i've picked more of the orange color ones and i'm going to glue put some hot glue right along the edge i'm going to kind of make them stand up just because they don't have any metal stems and just hang it just hold it there while it dries then I'm going to do another one on the other side. Just like that. And let's see, maybe we'll add another one. And we're just going to add two more. Maybe we'll just stick it right underneath that one and make it just go a little bit more flatter on the sides. All right, so I did put a couple on there uh, on top. I just want it more fuller. So we did with the seven leaves, three, three, and one in the center. I am just going to hot glue some extra green, two on each side. And the same thing with the other side. Now, if you're finding they're lying too flat, sometimes when you're hot gluing it, one goes a little bit more flat. You could always just stick a little rock. I'm just gonna do it under this one. You can stick it on the under, just hot glue the rock right underneath and it will prop it up some more. And I'm gonna add two more of the orangey leaves as well just right underneath and i'm just gonna hot glue those right on like that and they're probably gonna flip out flip uh, fall off as i show you but i'm just gonna turn it sideways it is gonna fall off anyways it will show you a little bit of fuller and i see some little glue sticks and then i'm just gonna use some dt raffia um just making a little bow and I'm just gonna hot glue it on right there just for to hide the stump a little bit. I'm gonna glue that right on and then I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it's done. All right guys, Mr. Jack-O-Lantern is done. I think he turned out really well. I am just gonna go in another room where it's a lot darker and show you what he looks like all lit up. All right, guys, here he is. He is finished. I think he turned out really well. Keeping them, keeping the pumpkin uh, more flush to the wall will bounce the light off the back of the wall and it will shine a lot more than if it was further away from the wall. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, please give a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscri subscribed, please do so. And um, next tutorial won't be out for another two weeks, but it will be a bunch of minis and I'm going to do Halloween theme. Take care. Happy crafting. See you soon. Bye.